Good morning or afternoon or maybe evening, ladies and gents. We are going to chat quiz three redemption review here. Mr. H is going to go through a couple of reminders before we get rolling. Number one, we have got the answer key for this in class and online as well. So the ones that Mr. H doesn't do, I'm not going to do every single one. I'm going to make sure I, I touch on everything that you make sure that you are working on your own. And also a reminder if this applies to your particular class this year with what we discuss in class, um, your help sheets. Make sure if there's something that you're kind of a little, little iffy on that you make sure to get that jotted down on to there so you're ready and ready to go for the quiz. Now, with that out of the way, let's chat. So solve each equation by completing the square. All right, so let's see. Let's just start with number one. First job whenever we are doing completing the square is to get our variable terms alone on a side by themselves. So whatever we've got to do to get any other terms out of there, we need to do. So 96, see you later. And when we get those P's in this case by themselves, on each side of our equation, we're going to put a blank. So how do we find the mystery value that goes in the blank? We're going to take our B term. We're going to take our number in front of our variable term. Okay, in this case, that 20. We're going to take that. We're going to divide it by 2. That never changes. And then we're going to square it. That never changes. And a reminder, that squared number is always going to be positive. If you get a negative, it's because you forgot the parentheses. So little things like that we have to pay attention to. So we get that on there. So now we're about ready to get down to my mathematical business here. So how do I go from a trinomial to a square of a binomial? Again, keep it simple. P, what's half a positive 20? Positive 10. We're ready to roll. And we've talked several times in class about how these two things are the same. So if you're like, wait a minute, where'd the 20 go? Go back, look at our completing the square lesson, and I explain that in detail there. So now, let's get this solved. I need to get to the P, but it's stuck in these parentheses, and that squared is kind of guarding my parentheses. So I need to get rid of the squared. So square root, we'll get the squared out of my way. And remember, these are quadratics. There's going to be two answers. So I do plus minus here. And what's the square root of 4? 2. And we're almost there. I want to get p alone. I'm going to minus 10. And we've talked lots of times about how that plus minus that I put in front of my 2 is like a wall. So here I look and I'm like, all right, so p equals negative 10 plus or minus 2. Now, there will be some instances that it's okay to leave it that way. This is not one of them because there's no radicals here. I can actually do negative 10 plus 2. And I can actually do negative 10 minus 2 and get my two answers. Okay. You're like, oof, there's a lot of things going on there. There are, but as I say and say and say again, the more you practice it, the more it becomes natural and the less thought you're having to do with it and you're just doing it and it just goes right along for you. Okay. So sometimes everything nice and easy breaks down, we go and roll with it. Sometimes that's not going to be the case. So we're going to go down to number three here. Because that way you're going to kind of be able to work side to side when you're doing yours. So I look and I'm like, okay, let's use number one as our example. We talk about that with the study habits here. Okay, so get my variables alone. I've got to get the 78 out of there. Do the opposite. Okay, n squared plus 6n plus blank. Equals 2 plus 78 is 80 plus blank. Okay. So let's see here. Take my n coefficient, my 6. 
divide it by two. And the nice thing about the video too is, even when I get really excited and I'm just going along here, you can pause me, you can rewind me, you can hear me say it as many times as you need to to have it make sense for you. So we get that in there. Again, how do I get the magic number to go in my parentheses? Half of my n value. Half of 6 is 3. I don't need the n with it, okay, but just the 3, and we're ready to go. Get that squared out of the way. Now, 89. All right, let me grab my handy-dandy calculator here. Definitely do not need a graph right now. Okay, 80, 89 is a decimal. We don't do decimals with this. So we take a moment. Now, of course, that I was going to say, now, of course, that my, my radical help is gone. And we look at some of these perfect squares that are less than 89, and we're kind of like, okay, do any of these divide in evenly? Are any of them a factor of 89? And so, I mean, I may try some shoot. I may try them all. Well, okay, I'm probably not going to try them all right now because I'd like this video not to be an hour long. But you start to mess with some of these. You're like, oh, 40, oops, 49. No, I got a decimal. 36, no, no, no. So I'm just trying those, but I keep getting decimals. I find out none of them go in. So that just stays as plus minus two answers, 89. And now I bring my three over. But again, the wall of plus minus is there. Sometimes we're going to get answers that look like that. Okay. So that's how completing the square works. You've got a couple more to play with on your own. Okay. Solve the equation with the quadratic formula. If you haven't, it might be in your best interest to get that jotted down somewhere. Opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared equals 4ac all over 2a. I'm just looking to see some options I have here. OK. So same thing with this. You're like, what's a, b, and c? We remember that we always have equals zero. That's going to be critical. And once we do, there's my A, there's my B, there's my C. And I do my thing. So I just follow this. The opposite of negative 5 is 5 plus or minus the square root of B squared. Make sure I keep, anytime I'm squared, I want parentheses. 4ac all over 2a. Now, exact answers. We don't do decimals here either. No decimals. So, if I want the calculator to help me, and it can help me a little, there's where it can help me. Not with the radical just with what's underneath it. So 625, holy moly. I get that still under a radical. Now you're like 625, that's gonna take forever with the breakdown thing. Before you do the whole breakdown thing, always give that number a chance under the radical, because you never know. It may be a perfect square on its own. And if it comes out even, it's not under a radical anymore. I've seen some of you do that. You'll keep this under the radical, and then you'll break it down again. Once it gets out of radical jail, we're not, we're not trying it twice here, okay? Once we're there, it's kind of now more like what we did in number one. I can actually break this up into pieces. 5 plus 25. Minus 25 divided by 12. 
Now, if you want to let the calculator help out some, don't forget the parentheses, though. Two decimals. Five minus 25 divided by 12. Definitely don't do that decimal. I look, and I'm like, okay. We can get fractions. We can get square roots. We can get anything with these. So again, have that formula jotted somewhere. I am not putting it up on a board. I'm not doing your responsibility if you need that, if it's not here, to do help sheet work with that. Just saying. All right, one more of these to play with. Um, let's play with eight. Let's bounce around a little bit here. So I look at eight. Problem number one. That's a positive 8. I got to bring that over first. Once we have equals 0, now I can do A, B, C. All right, here we go. Opposite of B, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That is just about taking your time, making sure everything's where it belongs. And like we did on the other one, we just want what's going on underneath the radical. Oof, a big number again. Now, sometimes these will break down. Sometimes we're going to have to do a little work. I mean, I don't know. Let's see here. 29. Oh, Hardy's lucky day. Again, if it comes out clean, we just roll with it. Let's move this over a little bit. 3 plus 27 divided by 4. 3 minus 27 divided by 4. So let's see, 3 plus 27 is 30. I can do that. Enter. Negative uh, 24. Okay, get my two. Whoop. Probably it helps the solutions were in the box. Okay. So there again is my quadratic formula. Okay, we get that set. Then we come to our most recent stuff that we're dealing with which is complex numbers, our i's. So just a reminder, and again, I'm going I'm to hit a little of everything here. When we're doing number 9 or number 10, just treat it like it's a variable term. Well, what do you mean by that again? Okay, so if we were doing normal stuff, you'd be like, well, this minus distributes, so I, I know that part. So negative 5, negative i, negative 1i. Now I'm just going to combine like terms. 3 minus 5, do watch your signs though, is negative 2. 4i minus 1i is 3i, and I'm set. 9 and 10, if there's a plus or a minus in the middle, you are just combining like terms. That's all you're doing. However, if... There's no plus or minus in between, okay? No space in there, no space in there. We're multiplying. Negative 7 times 7 is negative 49i. Negative 7i times i is negative 7i squared, because we're using our exponent rules. We add the exponents. Again, if I don't see one, there's little ones there. But reminder, reminder, this is the one time when i squared occurs that we actually put a value to it, okay? That's negative 1. So all I'm doing here negative 7 times negative 1 is positive 7. 
and I'm done. Okay, so when you're multiplying, same thing as if it were a variable, unless you get an I squared, then we just do a little substitution and we're done. Terrible there either. And then our last piece with our complex numbers was division. And we talked about, hmm, which one do I do? I know what you're all going to tell me, so I'm going to do that one. Okay, let's do 14. When we're doing this, to get rid of i's in the denominator, because we can't have i's there, you multiply by what's called the complex conjugate, but in simple terms, it just means switch the sign on i. Okay. So we start up with this, doing our distributing, all right. 60i, 10 times 3 is 30i squared. We'll come back to that i squared in a minute. Down here below, we chatted about, we've got to FOIL that, or if you, again, need a little help with the organization, making sure that you get all the terms, you can make a little box, and we just multiply what's on the edges of each of those boxes. So I look at this, and before I combine things, remember, I squared is negative 1. So this is negative 9 times negative 1, which would be positive 9. So 9 plus 36 is 45. And negative and positive 18 cancel. Now before we circle that and say we're done, oh, yeah, that's right. Before we circle it and say we're done, we've got a couple things we've got to take care of here. One of them is that I squared is negative 1. So 30 times negative 1 is negative 30. So you're like, okay, 60i minus 30 over 45. And we're like, yes! Almost! Now, if this was the quiz and you put that as your answer, you're going to, probably going to get hit for like one half out of three. It's, it's not a big deal, but... Is there a number that will divide into all three of these? And so you look. That's always the last question to ask before you circle something and say, I'm good, I'm done. So here, if I start messing with it, maybe you'll think, hey, maybe it's five. And so you try five right away. And so as you start dividing in and you do five, you're like, okay, I reduced it, I'm good. Did I get the biggest one? Well, let me look one more time, just to make sure. 12, 6, and 9. I feel like something else goes into all three of those. Let's see here. Uh, 3? 3 does go into all of them. Okay. Oh my gosh, Hardy. Learn how to, learn how to divide. Some of you are probably screaming at the screen there. Hardy, 12 divided by 3 isn't 3. You're, you're right, and thank you. Okay. To be honest, I could have taken 15 out of all those right away, but notice here, if you take your time, even if you get a small number and just look for a minute, you're going to be okay. okay. So that's our complex numbers. And yes, to answer the question that some of you have probably been thinking since the start of this, if you didn't hear me say it in class, no, the quiz itself is not going to be this long. I just wanted to make sure we had plenty of questions to be able to try out here. Okay. So let's play with a couple of these. Solve by taking square roots. We know how this rolls. Get the x squared term alone. Okay, don't square root it yet. I don't even care if that's a perfect square. Don't square root it until it's alone. Once x squared is all by itself, plus minus, seven is not a perfect square. You could try dividing four in, it doesn't do me any good. Sometimes, that's all I'm gonna be able to do, sometimes. Other times, we may run into something like number 16. 
So again, get the term by itself. Then work on getting r squared by itself. Okay, and again, on the quiz, it may be if something's divided, you multiply or something like that. We just got to be aware of that. Now, 45. Okay, so I punch it in my calculator. I'm like, uh, no, it's a decimal, Hardy. Okay, again, take a moment. Are any of the numbers above my pointer finger here divided into 45? You're like, well, yeah, 9 does. Okay. So 9 times 5 is 45. The 9 is the perfect square. It gets out of radical jail. It's ready to go. So that's there. 5 still being irrational. So sometimes it may not break down at all. Sometimes it may break down some. And as we've seen before, sometimes it may break down completely as a perfect square. I don't know, but you have to look into that. We have to look into that. Now, we're getting towards the end. Okay, write in vertex form by completing the square. You're like, wait, we already did completing the square, Hardy. We did, but we have one more piece to play with here. We're going to play with number 20. You're like, vertex form. Yeah, that's why I do these videos, to give you the opportunity to run back through one more time Remind yourself, this is what I'm comfortable with. This is what I'm uncomfortable with. This is what I need to put on my help sheet, or I need to do some more practice problems. It's not just a show up and, and here we go thing. So I look, and I'm like, okay, completing the square. Well, I know how to complete the square, even though Hardy doesn't know how to spell complete. That, that's a different thing. When we're doing it in vertex form, we put a blank with our Ys. You're like, I'm not going to move anything? Nope. I put a blank with my case. So basically the rule is each variable, the y and the other variable, are each going to get their own blank. The process for completing the square is going to be the same. I'm still going to take my b value, the number in that's in the middle there. I'm still going to take that. I'm still going to divide it by 2. I'm still going to square it. Everything about this is still going to be the same. Still want the binomial square. And it's still going to be half of that middle number. Nothing has changed. But now I take a peek and I'm like, this is what I want to get to. Oh, I'm close. Like, that looks just like this. That looks good. But here, to get y alone, got to get the 49 out of there. We're in vertex form. Okay, so again, if you knowing what vertex form even is, is an issue, you know what I'm going to say, right? Get it on the help sheet. Because I'm, I'm not answering that on the quiz. That's, that's, that's up to you to figure out what you want to do here. Okay, so let's see here. Almost to the end. Solve by taking the square roots. Okay, you're like, Hardy, we already did this. Well, hey, that's by itself already. That's cool. Oh, you know what's coming. You know it. Negative, wait a minute. Negative 46, square root of negative 46. Uh, uh, no solution? No, oh no. How do we get the negative out from under the radical? You know it. Take an eye out. Now notice. What did I almost forget? Really, Hardy, after all the times we've done this. I almost forgot plus minus because there's two answers still. 46. Okay. Square root of 46? Nope, decimally. You notice I keep doing the same thing over and over? Okay, I'm going to be your human calculator. Decimal, 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 decimal. 
Nothing goes in. I'm done. So all I had to do is pull out the I and do plus minus. Yes. Are there some you're going to have to break it down? Yep. Are you going to do that one? Nope. Like, dang, Hardy. Okay. Last two. I'm going to play with the evens here. Solve by factoring. People. Yes, you can use your factoring help sheet. I can't say this enough, and I don't know why people ignore me with this. That is always the first question you ask before you start factoring. Is there a variable all my terms have? Is there a number that divides into all of them? If there is, get it out of the way. Make life simple. If you have not practiced factoring, there are tons of factoring videos on Classroom, on these reviews, in your packet to practice. You've got to put in the time. You can't just look, watch me once and go, oh, you got to be done. You can't do that. Now, with the Hardy Mini Lecture out of the way, let's do number 24. Okay, all three terms do not have n. Okay, no number divides in. Okay, I did my due diligence. Number one, nothing, nothing's in common. There's no number in front of n squared. So, multiply and add. My clues are there for the taking. My multiply number is negative. I need one of each sign. That's the only way I can get there. My add number is positive, which means the bigger number is going to be positive. Now, whether you use your multiplication chart, whether your brain works well with these functions, okay, to make sure, if all else fails, start dividing small numbers into 42 and just kind of keep messing with them. Get yourself three or four. Again, I'm just punching in 42 divided by two, I get a number. 42 divided by 3, I get a number. You're like, Hardy, why don't I see 4 or 5? Because when I punch those in, I get decimals. Decimals aren't going to help me. And so I get to here, and then I stop for a minute. I go, okay, what's the goal? I need to get to 1. Is 2 and 21 getting me to 1? No. Is 3 and 14 getting me to 1? No. Can 6 and 7 get me to 1? Ooh, it could. With one of each sign, sign of the bigger number. Negative 6 plus 7 is 1. Negative 6 times 7 is negative 42. Awesome, but solve. Don't stop. Take each of those quantities, each of those sets of parentheses, set them equal to 0. and get your solutions. Hardy, how'd you get to those? Minus seven, minus seven, plus six, plus six. Just normal one-step algebra problem. Okay, last one, and you've made it. Congratulations, good job. 26. Do not slide and divide. You could, but I don't know, four? Well, let's see. 40 divided by 4 is 10, yeah. Yep, 4. Take the 4 out front. It does not disappear. Don't, don't have it disappear. It's still there. And divide each of these by 4. When I get to the factoring part, this is all I'm factoring. Do not try to bring the 4 back in. Do not try to slide it down. Do, don't None of that stuff. Factor what's in the parentheses. You're like, ooh, but there's not even a number in front of it anymore. You're right. You're right. All the signs are positive. Okay, that's nice. Multiply to 24. Add to 10. So I start dividing numbers in. Now, be careful. This, this is why I did this one. 
You're like, okay, 1 and 24 can't get to 10. Ooh, Hardy, 2 and 12 could get to 10 because 12 minus 2 is 10. Now, that's true, but here's the problem. All the signs are plus. So is 2 plus 12 going to get me to 10? Nope. Is 3 plus 8 because they're the same sign going to get me to 10? Nope. You're like, well, wait a minute. Last problem, you were saying that could be a part. If the signs are different, then it, it, it is a part, okay? One's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. It's almost like it's a subtract problem. If the signs are the same like they are here, we've got to add to get to 10. Oh, 4 and 6 will get me there. 4 and 6. Little things like that. That's where the practice comes in. So I go to do my answer. Can I set 4 equal to 0? Not really. There's no x there, so that, I'm not going to do that. Subtract the 4, subtract the 6. We've made it. All right. Now, we took our time with a ton of detail and a ton of other things. We got to the end. I am not going to tell you how many questions there are on the quiz. It is significantly less than this. That is, that is what I will tell you right now. It is significantly less than what we have on here. If you have your help sheet ready, if you've practiced on your own, if you've done the other problems that we haven't done together on your own and not just copied the key, you're, you're going to be okay. You, you are. So I trust you're going to make some good decisions, um, that you're going to do your due diligence here, and that you're going to do a fantastic job. We'll see you next time.